Hello and welcome to another video by Day Night Gaming. In this video we'll be discussing a beginner's guide to the different rarity colors of equipment in the MMORPG known as Final Fantasy XIV. So first up, we're going to talk about the most basic of rarity and we're going to be talking about the gray background and this is an example, we're going to show the horn ring and this could be low level crafted gear but also gear that you can purchase directly from an NPC and also gear that you might find through questing. Next I'm going to show you the high quality version of the gray basic rarity items. As you can see here, this is a high quality version of the horn ring. And if you look at the background, you'll notice that there are these sparkly dots on it. And also after the name horn ring, you have this little symbol that would signify high quality. Now high quality items are basically the same items that normal quality would be, but they have just a little bit better stats. And if we use this example, you'll notice that the stats on the high quality version of the horn ring are definitely higher than the normal quality. And for sake of this video, currently please don't pay attention to the material slots that are socketed into the item. We'll deal more about that later. Next, we're gonna move on to the ethereal rarity and you'll notice that this has a pink background. Now this gear is the same as the high quality version when it comes to the stats, but the difference is that instead of having materia open slots, instead it has two random stats that could be achieved through materia already put in. Now please keep in mind that this gear can only be found in lower level dungeons, and it would appear that Square Enix abandoned the thought pattern on developing gear with random stats on drop. So you won't find any ethereal gear after level 50. And remember, ethereal gear basically has the same stat allocation that gray high quality gear would have. All right, so moving on, now we're gonna talk about normal quality green tier gear. And basically, green tier, in all intents and purposes, are very comparable to high quality gray tier of gear. They tend to be just a little bit better in some shape or form. So we're going to use this example. We're going to use high quality steel sabatons and we're going to compare them to normal quality manor scale greaves. And you'll notice that they both have 52 defense, 52 magic defense, strength 4, vitality 4, and critical hit 5. So they basically have the same stat allocation as each other. But the manor scale greaves are equipable at level 28. So you can equip them two levels earlier than the high quality steel sabatons which are equipable at level 30. So as you can see here in this example, the normal quality green gear is a much more appealing choice between the two gear, especially since the manor scale greaves are also equipable by a lancer and a dragoon. So this allows a DPS to have the same defensive value as a tank, which is very rare as generally speaking DPS are more fragile than a class that is specializing in the tank battle jobs. So the main takeaway from this is generally speaking, normal quality green gear is superior to high quality gray gear in most instances when the items are of equal eye level. But as a disclaimer, please keep in mind that gear that is equipable by all classes is generally weaker than gear that's specifically geared for a more specialized set of battle classes. As an example, if you compare these two items, the Manor Scale Greaves have a 52 defense and the Manor Sandals only have a 29 defense. But the Manor Sandals are equipable by every Disciple of War class. So as an example, a monk can wear the Manor Sandals, whereas a monk cannot wear the Manor Scale Greaves. So for a monk, they would of course be equipping the Manor Sandals, but as a tank like a Paladin or a Dark Knight, they would instead choose to equip the Manor Scale Greaves instead of the Manor Sandals. Even though they are able to equip the Manor Sandals, they would instead choose the gear that has the higher defense. All right, so moving on, now we're gonna discuss high quality green tier of gear. And in this example, we're gonna be comparing the normal quality Exarchic Sword to the high quality Exarchic Sword. And of course, the high quality version is just superior to the normal quality version of the same eye level. Next, I wanna discuss normal quality crafted blue tier gear. 
Now, blue gear in general, the lowest level that it can be found is at level 50 or greater. And in this case, for blue tier crafted gear, this is of course gear that's crafted by a disciple of the hand. And the stats are comparable to that of crafted green gear. So as you can see here, we have a mighty thunder strike. And when you compare it to the Wooch Scimitar, for all intents and purposes, Basically, the stat weight are the same when both items are of equal eye level. And as you can see here, the only difference is the auto attack and the delay. Now, it's very important to note that this is very specifically crafted blue tier gear. And even though the stats are similar to those of the green tier crafted gear, the reason why these are blue is Square Enix wants to show the player that there's a special reason that makes this stand out more than the green gear. And when it comes to crafted blue tier gear, it's generally because they have some type of visual special effect like thunder particles or fire particles. And the easy way to tell if a blue tier of gear is crafted is if it's tradable and purchasable off the market board. Now please take note that when I say tradable, I mean non-spirit bonded, because once an item gets at least 1% spirit bond, it can no longer be traded. Next up is the high quality crafted blue tier of gear. And there's basically a better version of the crafted normal quality blue tier of gear. So using the high quality mighty thunder strike weapon as an example, as you can see here, when compared to the normal quality mighty thunder strike, the high quality version is just superior in every way. And you'll also notice when comparing it to the high quality green tier of gear, the high quality mighty thunder strike weapon is comparable to the high quality Wooch scimitar. They basically have the same stat weight and the only difference again being auto attack and delay, just like the previous example. So next up, now I want to discuss something that might be a little bit confusing at first. And this is the reward blue tier and the reward green tier of gear. And what this means is these items are obtained via as a reward for doing some type of task in the game. So it could be spending tombstones to acquire this gear, or it could be completing very specific milestones or quests or it could be defeating a raid boss. But basically these are untradeable items that you would receive from the game. And this tier of gear, whether it be blue or green, tends to have the highest stat allocation when it comes to item level. So here I'm gonna show you two examples of reward tier gear. The first one being a normal quality blue weapon. And this is very specifically the item level 520 Crypt Lurker Sword. And I'm also gonna show you a high quality green tier reward gear. And that is very specifically a high quality augmented Exarchic Sword. Now, both of these items as you can see, have very comparable stats. They both have 131 physical damage. They both have 97.81 auto attack and they both have 2.24 delay. They both have 490 strength, 556 vitality. And for their secondary stats, they both have plus 258 in one of the stats and plus 368 in another. So when it comes to stat weights, these are perfectly identical. When it comes to reward gear, regardless of the quality, either it being normal quality or high quality, they will have the maximum amount of stat allocation possible for their given eye level. What that means is when it comes to reward tier gear, these equipment are some of the most powerful available for that item level, with only purple tier possibly being better. And we will discuss that next. So last we have the purple reward tier of gear. And just like the green and blue reward tier of gear, this has the maximum stat allocation for its item level and is often referred to by many players as relic gear because the first purple tier of gear that was released back in 2.0 was called relic weapons. Now every expansion has a new set of its own purple tier reward gear. And the thing that sets this 
tier of gear apart from all the other previous types of gear is once they release a purple tier of gear for an expansion it will start at the appropriate item level of that patch and as subsequent patches are released more quests will become available in which you can actually slowly improve the gear so when it comes to the final patch of an expansion it has the ability to be the strongest weapon now here we have two different examples one being the purple tier reward gear and the other being the blue tier reward gear now the purple tier gear in this example is the blades honor which is a uh, item level 535 and next to it is the Eden Morn Bastard Sword, which is also item level 535. And you'll notice that both of them have 134 physical damage, 100.05 auto attack, 2.24 delay, 518 strength, 597 vitality. And then going to the secondary stats, you'll notice that both of them have 379 critical hit. But where this diverges is this current Blade's Honor has also 379 determination but the Eden Morn Bastion Sword only has 266. Now this does not necessarily mean that the Blade's Honor is superior to the Eden Morn Bastion Sword because the Eden Morn Bastion Sword still has two open materia slots. So with materia, the Eden Morn Bastion Sword can still get its determination up to 379 if the player so chooses. And that's because both of these items are set to the maximum amount of stat allocation available for their respective item levels. The main takeaway of this is that regardless if it's blue tier, green tier, or purple tier, all reward tier equipment are the best that they can be for their respective item levels. But on a final note, it's very important that the player make sure not to let the color of the gear dictate what they think is the best. The main takeaway is when deciding what gear to wear, you want to wear the highest item level possible. And then when choosing between two different items of the same item level, just compare their stats and take the ones that have the highest ones available to your class. And you wanna make sure that you're using bonus stats that work with the job that you're gonna be using them on. Just keep in mind that you always wanna to strive to have the highest physical damage or magical damage on a weapon, regardless if you're a tank, DPS, or healer. And when it comes to armor, you want to have the highest defense and magic defense that you can achieve per armor piece. And with your secondary stats, make sure that they work for your class as well. A good example is if you were to play a tank, their main stat is strength. They don't get any benefit from equipping piety, mind, intelligence, or dexterity. Thank you, hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, consider hitting that thumbs up, hitting that subscribe button, and ringing that bell for future notifications on videos that I might be posting in the future. And in case you're interested in supporting the channel even more, I do have a merch website at streamlabs.com backslash dngdangerous backslash merch. And until next time, take care, goodbye.